Hi, Will from Music Tech here at the AES show in New York with legendary engineer Bob Clearmountain. Bob, how are you doing? I'm very good. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Great. Yeah. Um, what have you been working on then, Bob? All right. Well, I got this this plugin. Um, I mostly, well, I don't mix in the box. I mix on a big SSL and uh, with a lot of outboard gear. Uh, a lot of it's, it is digital, but it's not necessarily in, in the in the box stuff. And so what happened was a, a few years ago, I was doing, I, I use a lot of effects like delays and harmonizers, de-essers, reverbs, EQs, just a whole, and the way they weave together is very simple in the analog world. You know, I'll just you know, bring out my delays in the console and then send them into some harmonizers, do some EQ, send them in a, a, a to cocktail of reverbs, and it's, it's very easy. My assistant, who mixes in the box, is very good, his name was Sergio Ruelas, he's a great guitar player, and he tried to do it in Logic, he tried to do it in Pro Tools, and he couldn't, he could get close after hours of pulling, tearing his hair out, but never could really get it to work. I tried to do it in Pro Tools and I gave up, because it just gave me a headache. And so we thought, well maybe it might be a good idea to, to do a plugin that does it all internally, if that was possible. We didn't, weren't sure if it was possible. We thought it might be, until we finally ran into a guy named Stefan Stenzel, a German programmer, who said, oh yeah, no problem, we can do that. Of course, he didn't realize how complicated it was at the time, <laughs> I don't think. And uh, so anyway, we came up with this thing, and I decided to call it Clearmount's Domain, because it's all these delays create like an environment, like a, like a sound stage of, kind of where the mix is, because I, I always want pick, people to picture, okay, it's a bunch of sounds, everything's recorded pretty dry originally, but you have to create a, an environment for your mix. And, <clears throat> and so, so that's what this is, that's why it's called Clear Mountains Domain. Here it is, here's, the, here's the, the first page, and as you can see, there's a whole bunch of presets, things like uh, run to you guitar solo, Okay, it's a very similar effect to the effect I use on that. There's the uh, Hungry Heart Reverb, which is basically, it was originally a bathroom in, in uh, the power station building that we use as a, as a reverb thing. Let's Dance Delay, this Let's Dance Snare Delay. And so we, we have a couple examples that we will show you. Um, so that, that would be, let, let's start with that. with and, and without the delay. You hear it, you hear what Na Rogers originally played on guitar, which is pretty basic, and then you'll hear it um, with the effect, and which is what everybody knows the record to sound like. It's just so a very extreme delay. And we're running through this signal chain on the left here, are we? You're running through the signal chain, yeah. And so, this is how it works. If you, you want to get under the hood, this, this starts, there's four different um, tabs, as you can see, there's four different pages. This is the first one. We start with some de-essers. So if you're gonna put a vocal through this, um, and you know, say I'll set up a long delay, well, I noticed years ago that hearing that S coming, coming back every time the delay repeats can be a bit annoying. So uh -huh. for years I've been using this, I've been delaying delaying the, the uh, or sorry, de-essing the delay. And I also do the same thing with reverb, so it kind of clears up, it gives you a lot more space in your, your mix when you de-ess the reverb. Uh, I don't always do it, but uh, it just depends on the, on the music. Uh, there's the EQ, you can EQ the, the, um, the input to the, the delay. Uh -huh. You can, input the, you can EQ the input to the reverb if you want. It's got filters. You've, you know, a lot of times wow. you'll, filter, you'll filter, filter, filter out a bunch of rumble, you know, things like that. So then the next one is, now this is where you select your, your delay settings. So you can obviously set 
by the, uh, the th think it's your your session. Uh -huh. I've, here I've set up a quarter note, and this would be like a dotted eighth. Two different delays on each side. Now, if you were to do something like that, and then you spun them into themselves, you regenerated them into themselves, so you get multiple delays. Um, and you turn that thing off. Um, and then if you link them together, now you see that, uh, right here, this is a better example. So now I have a dotted eighth on the right and a quarter note on the left. And um, so they're spinning it into themselves. Now, if, if you were to do this without this button in, then you'd have to set them separately, right? Mm -hmm. But if you do this, then it automatically compensates because this delay is going to going to decay quicker because it's a shorter delay, the delay in the left, and this compensates for it automatically. Ah, right. And then you can add a bit of blur, which is really just like a saturation distortion, got it, which makes it sound a bit more lively. Um, there's a bunch of other things that you can put the um, because there's a harmonizer on each delay, you can put that before it regenerates or after. If you have the same delay on both sides, you could uh, spin crossfeed. So now, now the output of the left one's going into the right, the output of the right's going into the left. So it's like a ping pong effect, which is a common thing. A lot of mixers use that effect. Yeah. But to do it um, like this, if it's the same delay, it's just going to sound like mono. So if you go link offset and you add a little offset, say you add, say 15 milliseconds on the left, now you've automatically subtracted 15 milliseconds on the right, so your image gets wider. Right, okay. But you still have basically the same, the same delay because you're adding and subtracting the same amount. So it does a lot of little tricks like that. And these are the sorts of tricks that you would use that I would in your mixes? In my mixes normally. Yeah. You know, but it's a bit more tedious <laughs> because you don't have all these little gadgets to help you out with. Right. You know? And then the pitch is the harmonizer. The pitch is the harmonizer. And here's the and settings. And so what's the, what's the example where we can hear the harmonizer? I mixed a concert for Springsteen. Um, it was from Hyde Park in London, which I'm sure you know. I know very well, well. yeah. And, uh, and he did the song Jungle Land. And if you're familiar with the song, there's a sax solo, there's sort of a, like a, a breakdown, a tempo drops, um, there's a bit of a modulation, I believe, and then Clarence takes off on the right, stage right, on the left side of the stage, on the solo, and um, the, 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 what I tried to get, and what you could see in the, on the video, is you see a couple hundred thousand people in Hyde Park, and of course there's buildings all around Hyde Park, and I was trying to get the sound of his sax kind of reverberating through the park, bouncing off the walls of the buildings. And so, basically what I used is a long delay, I think it was a quarter note, probably a quarter note delay, ping-ponging back and forth across, and then with harmonizers. <clears throat> On that, when I did it manually, I, I, I did like a plus five cents, minus five cents, with this pl plug and you can actually do a random thing, which is more like an ADT type mm -hmm. of an effect. <coughs> and um, so that's what you're hearing on that, that plug -in. And then it's also going into a bunch of reverb. I mean, let me get the plug in up. Let's see. That would be uh, live. Jungle Land. You see like, it? There Jungle yeah. Land. There it is. Thanks. See, it's also feeding into this reverb, which is a, a, a long, it's about a four or five second echo chamber. Up here, it's, it's also going into the Apogee Studio, which is like a warm ambience. And the direct sound is going in with a 58 millisecond delay. Um, the direct sound's going into this chamber with a 111 millisecond delay. Uh, and then the delay is al also feeding into that as well on both sides. And so it kind of spreads it out and you just get this big wash of sound.
so the Born in the USA snare drum, basically this is really simple. Um, there's no delays. If you go to the mixer, you'll see that I, I have everything turned off except the, the gated plate. Right? Oops. I care. And we, here we have this gated plate, which we select. There's a bunch of uh, impulse responses down here. These are all things that we found ourselves, that we created for various places. And so basically what this is, it's that Roscoe chamber with a, a very severe gate on it. So it just lasts a certain amount. And you can hear it in there, where with it and without it, without it, it could be any old snare drum. Mm -hmm. With it, all of a sudden it becomes Born in the USA. There's a lot going on in this plugin, Bob. How much is this going to cost people, and when will it be available? $349. It's available now from the Apogee website, mm -hmm. apogeedigital.com. If you go there, you can, you can find it. It's also available from uh, Sweetwater and a few other music dealers, I believe. I'm, I'm sure Vintage King and a few other places will have it. And, and is there uh, a trial that people can give a, a go There's 30 days. Or a 50, there's a 15 day trial. Okay. And uh, so people can test it out, see if they like it, and then they, they, they better fucking buy it. <laughs> <laughs> or otherwise, I'm going to come over and beat the crap out of them. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. That's the best sales pitch we've had all day. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks very much, Bob. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs>